Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of XL Garage. It's been a little while I know, but there's not really been a whole lot going on uh, worth pointing a camera at, so I'm sorry for that. But let's uh, get you up to speed of where we are, and I'll let you know what we're doing in this episode. So if you're not familiar with the channel, this is my GT86, and as you can see, it's where that an engine at the moment. Speaking of the engine, here it is. It's a Chevrolet L92 LS based family engine, which I've essentially rebuilt, deleted VVT, just did new rings, bearings and a new cam in it. It's essentially, it's essentially an LS3 with like 0.5 less compression now. And the idea is to get that into there. So a bit of an ambitious task, definitely not reinventing the wheel. It's definitely been done before, but first street car LS swapped GT86 in the UK. So that's exciting. And if you check out my uh, my previous episodes, previous playlists and so on, you can see me, uh, you can watch me rebuild that. But if you are all caught up with that, then in the recent episode, you would have seen me stripping down the engine bay, ready to get it painted. So we're back on that really. Deal toing and throwing, I think I've decided on a color now. Just something nice and neutral to, to make the engine pop to complement whatever exterior color is on the car, be it the current wrap or a future paint job and so on. And I've, been, I've also been kind of going back and forth between uh, painting it myself, with a spray gun and so on, or just getting someone to do it because uh, after you tally up all the costs of the compressor and the spray gun, then you start to just think, well, why don't I just pay a professional to do it? So it might well be what I do. Let me show you what we've done recently because I did a couple of bits off camera, get you caught up to speed of where we are and what I'm gonna be doing this episode. So let's jump into that. Right, so here we are. So engine bay here, looking a bit messy, very empty, but very messy as well. So at the end of the last episode, you would have seen me clearing down a lot of this. Um, it probably doesn't look a huge amount different to last time, but there are a few subtle differences. The main difference being that we've now finally got rid of the gearbox brace down the tunnel here. You can see that it used to be there, it used to run on the top there and then that side as well. And that is just needed to uh, obviously open up the gearbox tunnel here to fit a new gearbox. So where's that? I've just uh, gently massaged some of these corners just to let the uh, exhaust Manifolds through, haven't done too much. Got rid of the uh, got rid of fuel pipes that ran kind of in this area. And another thing I've done is also just get rid of the original strut brace mounts that mounted here, as you can see by the uh, primer. They join back to there and another one to there. Um, unfortunately, they're just a little bit too low to work the LS, so I'll probably end up going with a uh, over engine strut bar in their place. So that's where we are now. Um, next steps really, as you can see, the engine bay is just filthy. It's just dusty, it's dirty, it's got grime, grease, it's got leaves down in some of these corners. So I'm gonna be getting all that out, sweeping all that out, removing any additional wiring I can, then just starting to bag, tape, use some tin foil, just cover everything that doesn't need to be painted so it doesn't get painted, obviously. Then I'll probably start laying down some tape lines uh, along the windscreen, the arch, I'm not sure how far I'll go down. I might just go down to say kind of uh, this area and then along, I might go all the way down. I'll probably just keep it to the top. You're never, gonna, you're never gonna see any of this obviously and it's black at the moment, so who cares? And there's a lot to do really, a lot to uh, still clean up. And then I'm gonna get the uh, painter around, a local guy that um, just to let him see how it is, how I'm gonna present it to him, make sure they're happy to work on it as it is uh, and go from there really. So really, it's just a case of cracking on. I'll uh, stick you guys on a tripod, probably time lapse it, do some voice dubbing over the top of that. And yeah, we'll just have a good one. Let's get to it. Well, here we are. The arduous task of clearing out the engine bay of all the grime, dust, leaves, debris, whatever else I might find in there. It's always a mystery. We're getting out the big guns. You see, I've got Henry here giving me a hand. He doesn't mind getting down and dirty and uh, clearing all this out with me without decent access to compressed air and an air gun or such, uh, this is really the best thing I could do. So throughout the engine bay, I did find a couple of spots of rust, some stickers, just parts that were a bit, bit nasty or crusty, missing paint here and there. And so I just took a grinder to those, 
flattened them out, came back, sprayed them with some primer, job done. Went throughout the entire engine bay with this degreaser and water combo. The degreaser here is nothing strong, it's just some water based stuff, but as you see with a brush, it suds up really nicely. Spray it down with some water or even just drown the whole lot just to get any of the residue off. Don't want it kind of sitting there. And this is really just a first layer of degreasing. Before any painting, be it done by me or done by a painter, it would be thoroughly gone through with uh, you know, everything from brake cleaner to prep wipes, you know, panel spray, whatever really. But overall, the whole thing is just about being as thorough as possible. Making sure that there's nothing loose left around, no horrible greasy or oily spots. Just a somewhat clean canvas to start keying up ready for paint. So let's sit back and enjoy. All right, here guys, it's been a little while now, so let me show you how we've got on. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, so I've spent a bit of time now kind of cleaning it up. As you can see, there's a lot more etching primer on the engine bay than there was previously. So I'll talk you through kind of what I've done. The problem with the engine bay, as you saw, is a lot of grime and grease and leaves and debris and God knows what else down in these corners here. So it's still a little bit, but there's no doubt that if I give this to a professional painter, they're going to go over the whole thing again anyway. So I don't want to get in their way too much. And there's no point in me spending effort that's just going to get doubled up. Tin foil looks funny, I know. Uh, I wanted to wrap the whole wiring loom in tin foil because it's easy to kind of squeeze around the wires and get it nice and tight. And it just kind of clings to itself. I haven't even taped that on yet, there yet. But I ran out of tin foil after literally that much. So good job. I need to buy some more. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, so kind of pretty clean down here now. All up around here. It's amazing really how. Uh, how the paint, like if you take this lip for example, how the paint comes up when you give it a good clean. I wish it were like that through the whole engine bay, but well, it's not. Anyway, so I've got the uh, bun and latch wire and one of my airlines in here. Got the other airline here. These are just going to stay loose, of course, as you can see, it's very easy to work around them. Uh, got the wiring loom kind of split into sections. So here's one section. And as you can see, that's very easy. But easy to manipulate and work around. Then there's the kind of hoop section that goes over there. And then there's the fuse box in here. But that kind of lets you get like right around, you know, the trouble areas are gonna be, you just have to like, you know, this is gonna have to be suspended to get right down in there. And likewise, this is just gonna have to be kind of suspended to get down in that corner. Found a couple of nasty areas while I was working around all this. There was a a lot of paint missing from this area and I wouldn't call it rust, but it had gone black and it was the metal that was black. So some kind of weird kind of reaction there. Just ground it all down, spritzed it with some etch primer. Of course, these are where the strut bar braces used to be. Just some little spots of rust around here. There was some spots of rust around the middle there. Ground down some stickers because it's easier than taking a knife to them. <laughs> Start to tape up some areas. Of course, we've got the arch runners. Don't want them to be hit of paint. Don't want the subframe to be hit of paint. Don't want the steering column to be hit of paint. And we've got some extra bits. Of course, I'm going to give them the kind of T that goes down the middle. I might manipulate that, cut it, and who knows, perhaps even not use it in the future, but may as well get it painted. Got the kind of wing mounts and so on to get painted as well. Today's Sunday, got a little bit bored now, so I'm just going to go home, uh, obviously. It's not nearly masked up fully, but whatever. Before it goes to the painters, I'm going to have them pop round. Uh, they're not too far away, so just have them, have them pop round. Have a look at the engine bay as it stands. And kind of just get their thoughts on it. See if they feel it needs more work. See if it feels they're going to have to do loads of prep. See if they can work around the wires as they are. Make sure they're happy with it before I go through all the effort of getting it to them, considering it's just a rolling shell right now with no engine and no power. So that's it. I'm going to pause things here, you know, Got another week ahead of me. Going to get the painter around, as I said, and then I'll come back and let you guys know what their thoughts were. Any good, bads, and so on. And the ugly. But hopefully once that's done, hopefully they're happy with it and we can get it out to them. They can do a great job spraying it all one color. 
get it back, perhaps give it a ceramic coat to make sure it's protected because I'm definitely gonna scuff this and scratch it and so on. And then yeah, just start getting things in like engine mounts, gearbox mounts, engine and gearbox in. Now nah, we need to get all that, all the brake stuff back in there first really, but yeah, exciting. Let's, I'll check in with you. Officer Painter's been here. So right guys, here we are back again. As I said, I'll give you a little update after I met with the painter. So the painter came by and had a look at the car as it was, as you see it pretty much there, you know, a little bit masked, the wiring kind of just held together, but not really properly masked off. He said that was fine. Uh, of course, I'd leave them to do that. They do it day in, day out. So I'm sure that's, that's you know, an easy task for them. Just had a look over everything, bits that I'd uh, like rust repaired down here slightly, uh, the parts that I cut off around the back there. And he said that was all, Good, you know, it's clean uh, after the clips you just saw. They go over all of it again anyway, as I said. They're gonna be scuffing everything up, so no big deal there. I can't remove the wiring anymore, or it doesn't look like I can, at least not easily, without pulling basically the entire wiring limb through. So, um, but they said there wasn't really an issue. They're going to suspend the wiring up from the ceiling in their painting bay, and that will allow them to work around it and get in all the nooks and crannies that they need to of course, we're going in Nardo Grey, I think I might have said that. Either way, we're going in Nardo Grey, just a nice neutral color to make flat, easy to uh, hide any blemishes, easy to touch up in the future if I inevitably scratch it, which I most definitely will, getting a great big engine in and out. And of course, in the future, it generally accents any, uh, any kind of feature colors quite nicely. So there's that. But I think that's it, unfortunately, for this episode. Not particularly exciting one, I know. Just saw me clean up the engine bay a bit. But uh, now it's just a bit of a waiting game. I'm going to be waiting for the uh, painter to, to take this away. Should be happening in the next two to three weeks, hopefully. And then when it's back, we can uh, go full steam ahead getting the, uh, getting the LS here in the car. So, of course, that gives you a little bit of a wait for the next episode. But I think I'll fill that in by uh, showing off some more goodies. Got the gearbox. So that's very exciting. A few bits we need to do to that. Need to get the bell housing on, measure up the input shaft, then get a new pilot bearing for the engine. So we need to do all that. We've got clutch and flywheel as well. Nothing crazy, just basic LS3 OEM stuff, you know, easily hold around the uh, power that it's put out. That's enough on that for this episode. I've got to uh, stretch out a whole other episode to uh, talk about that. So you'll uh, see more of that in the future. But as you can imagine, guys, that's the end of this episode for now. Got plenty more to come. So stay tuned, as I say. We get this back from paint. We we'll start steamrolling into getting the actual engine in the bay. Gonna have to do something with wiring at some point. Gonna have to do something with uh, a clutch master. Uh, solution at some point so that's all to come stay tuned for the next one hope you enjoyed this one if you did leave a little comment down below leave the video a like subscribe if you could that would, all of those things would be a massive help and really helps the channel going and growing as i say hope you enjoyed it do the bits down below if you enjoyed this video and i'll catch you in the next one guys cheers bye for now